Hey guys, welcome to Project Car TV. Working today on a Continental Flathead 4. Um, I believe this is about a 1952 model. Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison and thank you for watching. Came out of my forklift so I've got that old Clark forklift did a video a while back um, doing brakes on it and I've had it now for I guess going on about two years and it just it leaks oil it leaks it leaks everything so uh, over the winter the water pump gave out and so I've got a new water pump for it and while I was doing that the radiator needed some work and so I took that in and I decided I was gonna get rid of the oil leaks if I possibly could. So I pulled the motor and uh, it's pretty cool. It's the, the, the four cylinder motor, this, this center section, if you will, um, is the same as on the, uh, any of you have a gas powered uh, SA200 Lincoln uh, welder. Uh, a lot of the old ones used the same continental four cylinder. So it's that same basic engine block. Parts are still readily available for these things, even though it's as old as it is. Uh, the difference when it works in my forklift is this front drive area, uh, is a, it's a big gear drive driven off the crank to uh, run a hydraulic pump. And then of course mine uh, is a standard transmission, so it's got a clutch. So I've got a big, uh, uh, I don't know, it's got a bell housing that stays in the, in the forklift and then you've got this adapter plate on the back and and uh, but it's a real real compact uh, four-cylinder engine mine has got uh, points type distributor drive and then mine runs off of uh, propane so it's got the regulator and all that for that um, anyway plan here is to uh, initially I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a compression test on it just to see where it's at I've got a buddy who owns a machine shop um, and uh, if need be, we've already talked. He could he could bore it, and you know even if the even if we had any other problems, he can sleeve it. All those parts are, are available, so we can we can do whatever we need to on the block. If it's got decent compression, this thing runs so little. <clears throat> um, you know, I run it for twenty, maybe thirty minutes at a time, once every few weeks, kind of thing. So. Honestly, if there's if it's got even compression across it, and I don't care if it's 70, 80 pounds of pressure, um, we're we're gonna go with it. Um, so I, I don't have a desire just to rebuild the motor to rebuild it. If it's running fine, we're gonna leave it. And just change all the gaskets, try and get it sealed up to where it doesn't leak anymore. So and it uh, somebody had replaced the clutch on it at some point. Some of the gaskets on the oil pan you can tell have been replaced over time. Um, so it, somebody has been in this engine at least once in its life, but we're gonna go ahead and try and uh, uh, clean it up, get it ready. So I'm gonna put you on time-lapse cause I just, I gotta tear it down. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is do the compression test, then tear it down and uh, kind of get, see where we're going. So what we're gonna do is a quick compression test. Get all the spark plugs out and all that. We'll put just a little bit of WD-40 in these cylinders. Mostly because I've been power, I've power washed this thing three or four times now trying to get it all cleaned out. So I wanna make sure there's at least a little bit of oil in that cylinder before we run those pistons up and down. Put that on. Try and set this somewhere where you guys can see it. All right, let's try that. All right, if you can 
see that stopped it right about, yeah, it's just a hair over 100 pounds of pressure. So we got, yeah, it was just a hair over 100. Seems to be holding pretty good. Cut that off. Uh, we're only getting about 65, 67 PSI out of that one. See if it leaks down at all in the next minute or so. We may try it one more time. I may spray a little more WD-40 down in there just to see, make sure. I got, get up close here, got almost to 70 PSI, so. Let's work just a little more down in there. We're gonna try that one, one more time. came right back up to almost exactly the same, about 67, 68 PSI. identical to the first one, just a hair under a hundred. Let that sit for a minute. See if we lose any pressure. Oil leak on our oil filter.
happens is these lids get um, put on crooked. So, really, number two is our only weak cylinder. The other three are within just a couple pounds of each other. Number three is kept pretty low. So, I'm going to do uh, new gaskets anyway. My gasket set came with a head gasket. So, I'll go ahead and pull the head and check that number two cylinder real close and uh, make sure there's no cracks in the head or something like that. But I think as far as doing rings or, unless we see some damage in there, I'm gonna be content with just letting it go. When it's running, it idles smooth, it runs fine. It just really leaks bad. So I think really what I'm gonna do is go ahead and continue Taking some of the parts off, now that I've done the compression check, I'm going to go ahead and pull the starter. Um, this thing is leaking again, even though we just tried resealing it. They make a, uh, some companies take a aftermarket, uh, what would it be like a oil, oil filter relocation kit essentially, and they have a plate that bolts on up here, mounts the adapter, and then you do a regular spin on oil filter and then the two lines that feed it just go into the top of it. So I was thinking I was going to do that, and then I changed my mind. I was like, no, this has worked for 50 years. Well, this is probably why this, you know, one of the reasons this thing leaks so bad is because these oil filter canisters are so hard to get to seal up properly. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and bite the bullet, spend the 100 bucks, get the whole adapter and the new lines, and I'll get those ordered today. But in the meantime, we can break this down Get the gear accessory drive off the back, or uh, the flywheel adapter off the back, trans adapter off the back. Pull this gear accessory system off the front. Go through all the gaskets. We'll paint it as we come back up and get this thing put back together and ready to ready to go back into the forklift. So what I'm doing here real quick is uh, building a stop that I can bolt to the back of this uh, flywheel bell, or bell housing adapter um, that will, uh, and then I'll weld a little tooth coming off of it and that'll let me stop the uh, flywheel from rotating so I can take the, the crank bolt off and then later so I can put it right back on, you know, so I put it on and torque it. So. If you wanted to get super fancy with this, you could drill one hole, make the other hole slotted, and uh, do that on a mill or something. And then when you weld your tooth on, they'd give you adjustability for multiple engines. But, um, so I actually went ahead and drilled both of them oversized by a little. piece of eighth inch by three quarter flat bar and what we're going to do so it's going to sit on between those teeth and get welded right there so what I'm going to do now is mark that Approximately. 
can always move the teeth a little bit, you know, turn the flywheel a little bit to zero in on it. So we're going to weld that on. So we're going to weld that on like that, about an eighth of an inch high. And so you can see that. I'll just get a magnet that'll put it 90 degrees. Got about the eighth inch there. That should be pretty close to straight. I'm going to weld that on real quick and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so there it is. And I just looked at the timer and although I'll edit this down to where there'll be, you know, a couple minute video, two or three probably, um, it took 12 minutes and 11 seconds from when I turned on the, the uh, clock to now. So all the exhaust valves are real clean. Um, I'm still probably going to take them out and just clean up the backside, clean up the seats a little bit. The intake valves are just nasty looking, hardened up. So while the bearings and the even the cylinders and everything look pretty good, what I'm going to try and do here is take the valves out, clean them up, clean up the seats, and then put it all back in. So what I've got is a pair of pliers. Pop that valve down. There it goes. Pin just fell out. You can see that right there. It's just a little, like, not even a roll pin. With that out of the way, Try not to mar up the back of the valve too much, but then the valve will come right out. And you can see how bad this one is. And then the spring and the everything else will come out. Just give us a chance to look at the lifters. Well, that's in real good shape. So honestly, all I'm going to do is so I'm going to bag each of these up separate. Mark them for which cylinder they came out of, clean them up a little bit, put them right back in because everything's, unless I find one that's damaged, I don't have any intention of taking the cam out. Um, so let me get some bags, but we'll do another cylinder here. All right, so this is number four. We're working on the intake, so I'm gonna put four I. I don't know about you but guys, but every time somebody ships me something or parts show up, they come in a bag, I just save those bags. And they get reused over and over. Especially these heavier plastic ones. Like when I buy uh, bolts and stuff, that's what these tend to come in. Um, so then we're gonna do three I, two I, not sure. Yeah, it'd probably fit. Do one eye. Anyway, the I'm honestly starting to run out of bags actually because I've got this project and another one going on. And see, I already forgot that little keeper. All right, so let's get intake valve, and it's closed. You only want to do this on the closed valve. All right, 
so I got me a box here and uh, what I'm doing is this is the intake valve for number four so it's going to go in there and I can just keep them and then as I clean them I can put them right back in the box and keep track of them all so now let's do one more so you can see what I was doing so again I'm just using a you could use just straight nose pliers but just any kind of long nose plier is going to work they also make a tool for it if you want to go find it you're prying against the lifter you got to get it up high enough that you're going to get to the keeper and then the valve opens partly smack the valve a little bit and then you know, you can get it quite far enough There it goes. There you go. Now you can see the keeper laying right there. Sometimes you can just yep, get it, pull it straight out, right off the pressure. Make sure you don't lose that. And then just reach in behind the valve there and push it out a little bit. Then you can pull the spring. Over the parts, keeper, and then take a look at your lifter. A guide is a little deeper in, so what we're gonna have to do is come in and put a wrench on the flats there for the lifter, and then spin the lifter. Either take it all the way out or put it all the way. In. All right, so to do this, you're going to put a 9 16 on the lifter. There it goes. That's all it took, just that little bit. See, it's got a little bit of wear, but. No cupping or dishing of the, the base of the lifter. They look really good. So again, I'm just going to clean up valves and clean up the ports a little bit. And this thing's going back together. So that's it. That's how you pop or how you get the valve out of a out of a flathead. This happens to be a Continental flathead, but uh, works the same for a Ford or. One of the brands, Massey Ferguson, a lot of the others used actually this engine and just rebranded it for themselves. So, anyway, I'm gonna move on and get you guys back on back to watching what's going on.
Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.